What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 521 of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk podcast, Hot Tags of the Week, where I'll be breaking down not too much this week, to be perfectly honest, but some rumors, news, gossip, and other things in the world of pro wrestling that I feel like talking about, which again, as I said, it's not too, too much. This is a slow news week, so this is going to be a short one. I am your host, as always, Tony Mango. Rob's not on this edition. Uh, not only is there not much to talk about, but also he's got some other stuff that he's going to be taking care of in the morning. So, yeah, good to have a night off, especially after all the podcasts that these guys have done for me. I'm going to give them a little bit of a time off now when it comes to that. Um, so, yeah, this episode's not going to be super dedicated to any kind of topics that have been happening as of late. You know, thankfully, there's not another whole list of releases or anything. There's not some crazy stuff happening that, I mean, there's one crazy story, but at this point, it's old news because it was from Monday Night Raw. So, yeah, we're going to do what we're going to do here. And as always, I want to know what you have to say about these different topics. So drop them in the comments below. Tell me what your thoughts are about everything like that. And we're just going to roll along here. We're going to talk about the crazy story first uh, from Monday Night Raw the fan that attacked Seth Rollins. So this guy, at this point, we know a little bit more about him. He is Eliza Spencer. I think it's Eliza. It might be Elijah. I think it's Eliza. He, according to these reports about everything, the reasoning why he attacked Seth Rollins, which has been all over the place now, he just said that he, of course, he did the whole, like, I did it for The Rock, I did it for Rikishi and all that kind of stuff, just cutting a promo, in a sense. Uh, but he's also said that he did it to support Finn Balor and then there's other topics about that he had been basically catfished by this fake Seth Rollins account that had been requesting money from him. And then his girlfriend wrote a check and it bounced and it was a fraudulent check thing. And that was the whole thing that she got arrested for it. So he blames actual Colby Lopez, Seth Rollins, who was not in any means a part of this. And I am hoping that the guy understands that now doesn't seem like it from the last couple of things that I had seen. seems like he's still just sort of like, oh, I have my beef with Colby Lopez, and that's the whole thing. Like any scenario like this, you got to wish that cooler heads prevail and that this then some that's the end of this whole story and everything like that. It's always scary when somebody goes and attacks somebody like that. You know, the Bret Hart situation from a few years ago and everything too. But um, another story that came out of this was Chavo Guerrero had tweeted out something along the lines of, remember when the wrestlers used to be tougher than the fans? And he got some backlash from that. And then he said, of course, that he wasn't necessarily intending to offend anybody and to, you know, call Seth Rollins weak and everything. But I mean, that's basically what you're doing. And, uh, you know, own up to it. You made a joke. It didn't land all that well. And now you should just be like, yeah, sorry, I said a joke that didn't really land. Of course, just to put it out there, don't do any of this, anybody. Don't be stupid. Don't buy into this. Don't, like, think that you're going to get yourself famous. You know, it never works out and everything. So if you think that there's a situation like that going on, you got to talk to somebody. You got to seek some mental help. That's just the way that it is. That's the big story. And, again, it's a couple days old. So at this point... I don't really, you know, think I need to get deeper into that. I don't even know if I'd get deeper into it in any way. You know, I mean, the story sort of ends there, doesn't it? Uh, at least I hope that it does. You know, it's not one of those things like the Sonya Deville situation or anything like that. God forbid. But another story from this week is that everybody is speculating that Charlotte Flair and Andrade have split because they have unfollowed each other on social media. They have deleted some posts of some pictures of each other. And then, of course, there's just rampant speculation that, of course, that means, well, you know, the way that it is on a lot of social medias. I mean, how many people do you know that have had, like, their Facebook account, they just wipe the pictures of their ex or something? It happens to, you know, mostly everybody. But no confirmation about that. Nothing that has been the same as, like, Velvet Sky and Bully Ray, where it was just like, you know what, we've split. That's the last thing that we're going to talk about that. Or, for instance, Ricochet posting a picture of himself with... Samantha Irvin, 
instead of with Casey Catanzaro, which you can kind of assume at that point that he's probably not dating Casey Catanzaro anymore. He's probably dating Samantha Irving. So, um, yeah, if this is true that they have split in some fashion, they've separated, they're no longer engaged, whatever it might be, that's pretty big. Because then that implies that there was problems that are, of course, it's nobody's business but theirs. But it could have uh, ramifications of future things. It could be another reason why Charlotte would stick around in WWE, despite the fact that she's got all these things going on with these like negative um, rumors, at the very least, about her backstage attitude and everything. Or maybe that could be an explanation for the backstage attitude, if that actually is true. I'm starting to not believe a lot of that, to be perfectly honest. I'm starting to kind of think that that's a work. So if it is or it isn't, it might have something to do with this. It might not. This might not be a thing anyway. I don't know. Of course, I'm not part of that. I'm not a, you know, it's not a trio relationship and I'm not the third. But that is something that it'd be interesting to watch as far as at least if you start seeing like, you know, Andrade is posting a picture with somebody else. He's dating somebody from AEW, for instance, or whatever. Like, I mean, I don't know who's single and who's not. But if we start getting that. Andrade is posting pictures of himself, like talking about how beautiful uh, Thunder Rosa or Riho is or something. Then, you know, then it's going to be like, all right, you know, I kind of got a feeling that maybe he's dating her now. Or if Charlotte just starts posting the same thing, you know, maybe she starts dating somebody from. I don't know. She didn't obviously have to date somebody from WWE. It could just be some random guy. But Ric Flair has been talking about how he's never going to go back to WWE. He's never going to work for Nick Khan. Maybe Flair will be the one that spills the beans about this and kind of explains what's going on. But uh, that's a topic. That's a topic. (laughs) Again, I told you, it's it's a slow news week. Uh, Thumbnail being Scotty Tuhati has quit NXT. He was a producer for NXT. He's quit WWE. I should specify that a little bit more. And what he has said, I think, is very interesting. And it's very um, telling about the way that WWE is right now. He had said, quote, Today I've asked my asked for my release from World Wrestling Entertainment. 30 years ago I stepped into a WWE ring for the first time. I have lived my dream 100 times over. Some of my most special memories will always be from the last 5 years working with NXT. The black and gold brand was something special and I am proud to be to have been a small part of that. I always promised myself that I would never be part of something solely for the paycheck and that was where I was at. I told myself that I would walk away if I ever got to that point. So that is what I've chosen to do. Coaching and producing the stars of NXT will always be a highlight of my life. I love you all more than you will ever know. So essentially, Scotty Too Hotty had said, NXT 2.0, not digging it. See you later. Whether that's NXT 2.0 in and of itself, or if that's, part and parcel or just next door to the ideas that they're pushing now. He could be taking this as you're firing all these people and all these kids that I've been working on and I don't like that. So I'm gone. You're basically telling me that my work was was worthless or he could be saying, this isn't how I want to train these guys going forward. You know, the, these men and women that are in NXT I want to train them the way that we've been training them. And if you're telling me to train them in a completely different way, and if there's a good chance that you're going to do what you did with a hit row, where it's kind of like, let me bust my ass trying to pretend that these people are going to go somewhere when I know damn well that when they go to the main roster, they're probably going to get fired in the next couple of weeks. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe this is just another sign of him being like, look, I can't work in WWE if this is impossible. And for all intents and purposes, it seems like it's impossible to work in WWE these days. And, I mean, maybe that's what it is. Maybe they don't want you to work in WWE. Maybe they want you to just leave. <laughs> Bunch of cuts, you know? But Scotty Duhati leaving and flat out saying that he wouldn't just do it for the paycheck and that he doesn't have the passion for that anymore. Right around this time frame, yet another example of this changing of the guard of people that care being like, I can't do this. And I, it's not fun and it's not good. And I'm so curious about this quote unquote cardiac event with triple H. I really feel like there's something to that being like 
stress levels from hearing what Vince's plan is or something. It has to be something along those lines, right? I mean, everybody's just like stressed out and it's not just the pandemic. I mean, it's that's of course a big thing for a lot of people, for everybody in the entire world, basically, but WWE is just an extra level of chaos. And, you know, I guess it was too much for Scotty too hotty in whatever fashion, whether it was the stress levels, whether it was the, uh, the way that they're doing the business or I, I don't know, but, for him to leave and to say that, that speaks volumes. So I guess I'm just going to talk about the TV stuff, because really, I don't have anything else to say. Uh, <laughs> you know, Kofi's got another kid. Congrats. Uh, they're changing the referee names. That's stupid as all hell. I don't understand the point in that. Daphne LaShawn and uh, Dallas Irvin and all that. Like, do, why do you need to give the referees their own special names? You don't even say the referee names as it is. It's never like your referee for this contest is whatever, like they do in AEW. And you know what? In AEW, it's Aubrey Edwards. And people recognize her as Aubrey Edwards. It's not like she's going to go to another spot and AEW is going to lose out on not having some trademark thing. It's referees for fuck's sake. Most of the time, most people, especially the casual fans, they're not looking at the referee. And even the ones that are more dedicated fans, I could tell you, out of the group of friends of mine that all watch WWE, I am probably the only one that can name more than one referee. And I can only name maybe five, to be perfectly honest. So there's Aja, there's John Cohn, there's uh, Charles Robinson... At this point, a lot of the people that I would be able to name, of course, are no longer a part of the company from the past two years. Like, I mean, obviously, we've got Mike Chioda. He left uh, last year. So big uh, big name in Mike Chioda that had been there forever. But uh, I, I, I honestly can't tell you. Like, um, I used to know Drake Wirtz, his name, but he's gone. You know, he got released over the course of the past two years. I forget exactly when. I couldn't tell you a lot of the other ones. Uh, the zombie ref, I can't tell you the zombie ref's name. He's cool. I like him. But I can't tell you his name because you know what? He's a referee. So it's not like he gets an entrance the way that, you know, the tribal chief and the universal champion Roman Reigns gets. <laughs> it's a referee. You th slap the stripes on somebody and most of the time people aren't going to have any fucking idea that it's not a, just a new referee or something. I don't understand this at all. I feel like this is something that is completely and utterly pointless for WWE to be focused on right now, especially considering how crazy everything is and how much they need to focus on other things. But somebody out there is like, nope, nope, we need to have the trademarks for the referees too. Fuck off. I, I don't get it. It's driving me crazy. So before I move on and just run down some of the TV stuff, I want to remind everybody about the Manscaped Cyber Monday sale that's going on right now because if you missed out on the Black Friday stuff, which... I guess technically you did sort of miss out on because I'm not even recording this until uh, after midnight on the um, on Saturday. Uh, good news. Cyber Monday sale is exactly the same. It's 25% off your entire order and free shipping. So if you didn't pick up what you wanted to pick up as far as something for yourself or some kind of a Christmas gift or something along those lines, you can still take advantage of the same exact deal that's going on right now. Just head on over to manscaped.com slash smark pick up an order of whatever it might be something small, something big, something for yourself something for a uh, stocking stuffer. Maybe that like, you know, you want to get somebody a whole performance kit and tell them that they, you know, they need to groom themselves a little bit better and use the best tools for it. That is something you should be aware of. If you are in the market for something like that, Manscaped is great. We've been dealing with them for a long time now. I've been using all their products and everything. Talk about it every single week. And, um, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. So go to manscaped.com slash smark, S-M-A-R-K, and take advantage of that sale while it lasts. Because after that, then it's going to go back to the 20% off the entire order and free shipping thing. So keep that in mind, an extra 5%. Who doesn't want to save, right? All right, so let's start breaking down some of the TV stuff from this week, or at least anything that was interesting enough for me to talk about here. We found out who stole the golden egg. That was Austin Theory, and instead of getting punished, he got himself a WWE Championship title match against Big E, which he was unsuccessful in, but it's another step up in his career. It's pretty cool. 
We have new champions in the women's tag team champions. Queen Zelina Vega and Carmella defeated Rhea Ripley and Nikki A.S.H. Saw that coming from a mile away. As soon as they announced it, I had said to Caroline, I'm like, uh, I didn't set up a title change possibility for anything tonight, and I really don't want to, but they're totally going to change the titles. And they did. You know, I figure the rationality behind this isn't so much to put the belts on Carmella and Vega or so to take it off of Rhea Ripley and Nikki A.S.H., but more so just to do something for the sake of doing something. I think that that's why they did this. Although, it's worth being said, maybe one of the reasons why is maybe they plan on releasing somebody, and there's a strong chance. I'm not wishing it in the slightest bit, so don't take it that way. But there's a strong chance that we see somebody like a Ripley or an A.S.H. I hate saying that, an A.S.H. Nikki Cross. Uh, Nikki Cross or Rhea Ripley could be in the next round of releases. It's impossible to tell for so many different reasons, partially because they're literally telling people that they're planning big pushes for them and they're, they're going to be on this like merchandise kind of um, market and then they fire them. So if it, it's not even like following the rules that it used to where it's like, oh, well, that person's a champion, so they're not going to release that person or whatever. But maybe it is still in some ways. And if that is the case, there is a chance that the reason why they took the belts off of them is because they do plan on releasing one or both of them. And it's just a matter of you got to get the belts off of them in some fashion before we release them. So let's just have Carmella and Vega win because they're there. They clearly don't care about this championship, and we've known that from the very start. They introduced it by Vince McMahon just being like, you fucking want these titles? Then here you fucking go. That's basically all he did. And they have never really given it much of a thought. Once in a while, for like a couple weeks, they care, and it's only ever when it's been like the golden role models. Other than that, they really don't care. It's a prop even more so than the other props. So... It's not like they actually think Carmella and Zelina Vega is like some pet project that they want to dive deep into. They just put the belts on them for the sake of doing it. And that's so disappointing because they could have an actual tag team championship division if they, of course, they merged the brands and they did you know, this and this and this. Or maybe they did the whole thing where it was just a cross branded in between all of them, you know, but they don't care about the NXT ones either. It is the lowest of the low as far as the championships, except for one. And that one also changed hands, because that one is the 24-7 championship. Reggie dropped the title to Cedric Alexander, and then they did something a little different. They've done it before, but it is still a little bit different, because it's not the norm. Dana Brooke pinned Cedric Alexander, and all the people in the ring immediately stopped what they were doing. And they sat around like, what do we do now? She's a girl. We can't do anything like that. Nevertheless, they could just roll her up again. I mean, it's a roll up. It's not like this is like, you know, that they're trying to like uh, power bomb her through three tables stacked up with thumbtacks or something. You can roll her up. I mean, they've done it before with other championships and everything. And they've had, you know, pregnant Maria Canellis drop the title and everything. So... I'm assuming, of course, this is an actual pet project where they said, why don't we give the belt to Dana Brooke and see what we could do with this? And maybe we can do that instead of something where it's just Reggie doing the same exact act. Maybe releasing Drake Maverick threw that out for a little bit because he was somebody who was like spearheading that. Uh, I don't know about it as far as like creative side of things, but you know, his character was helping to spearhead the anti-Reggie movement. So switching it up and going with Dana Brooke. I'm interested. I don't think it's going to be the most captivating story in the world, but I want to see where they go with this. I want to see if they actually have any ideas or if their idea was literally, we'll figure it out. And if, you know, the way that WWE is, anytime that they say we'll figure it out, you can pretty much bet that it's just going to disappear one time and they're not going to figure it out. But hey, don't you dare say that they don't have long term criti uh, long term criticism, long term storytelling, right? That's criticism. That's what I should be saying. Um, we got some other matches here and there. Nothing really all that big on Monday Night Raw that I feel like, you know, uh, Kevin Owens is still having his issues with Seth Rollins and Big E. They're doing the same stuff. It's just killing time. 
That's what a lot of this episodes uh, were. There's nothing that happened on SmackDown, for instance. SmackDown was revolving a lot around, hey, you know that whole thing about Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, how they had that match a million times, and then they're going to do another one in the future, and then, you know, Brock got suspended, but we already said that he's not suspended anymore. Well, we're going to confirm that he, yeah, the thing we already said. Really? He spent a whole episode saying we are going to confirm the thing that we have already said about the suspension being lifted. The suspension was lifted. You announced it. You already said it. You can't just have a a whole second announcement of the same exact thing. That defeats the purpose. If you didn't watch SmackDown and I said to you, the episode was they determined a number one contender and then immediately said, that's probably not going to happen because Brock Lesnar is no longer suspended and that that was supposed to be the big reveal was that he was no longer suspended and you watched it before. You're going to go, well, why did I even bother? Of course I didn't watch the episode. Why would I bother to watch that? (sighs) Logic. You know what I mean? Uh, (laughs) Nothing else happened on that. Uh, NXT for this week. Let's see what happened on NXT. I don't even remember to be perfectly honest. I know that there was the triple threat match. Um, Oh, this was the week where everything went crazy as far as just like, I guess this guy's a heel. I guess that guy's a baby face. I guess they're teaming up now, that kind of thing. And then it's just, I guess that's that's war games. There you go. That's it. I'm not digging this whole MSK trying to find the shaman. Now, you know, I haven't been watching for the past couple of weeks. This is a week where I've been trying to catch up on things. I'm not digging that. I don't think it's all that fun. Uh, I've seen the jokes before, so it's not like it's fresh to me or anything. Uh... Santos Escobar is great, you know, uh, I'm liking Duke Hudson, but I don't understand why this is a hair versus hair match so much, and I don't understand why that's happening, but even more so, I don't understand why Joe Gacy is fighting for the Cruiserweight Championship, he's not 205 pounds, he's like 240 something, 245 or so, why is he fighting for the Cruiserweight title, do they really care that little about everything in WWE these days? That they're just like, I don't fucking care about even the rules of a show called 205 Live. And then the show that's not 205 anymore and it isn't live anymore. Then we're just going to have that bleed over into NXT and those rules aren't going to matter anymore. Then why is it the Cruiserweight Championship? If you don't want it to be the Cruiserweight Championship, merge the title with the fucking North American. Or call it something else. Make another championship. Call it the, I don't know, fucking paint uh, paint splatter championship. Nobody cares at this point. It's not going to matter. They're probably going to get, you know, the championship will get fired. (laughs) But I think that's so stupid. We have a a new gimmick for Tiffany Stratton, who is essentially a daddy's girl, spoiled, rich, entitled, hot girl, Paris Hilton sort of type. We'll see. I don't know. Could be fun. Could be really goddamn annoying. Tony D'Angelo is fun, although apparently he's a, he's a heel. Grayson Waller is a heel, and LA Knight's a baby face. And the War Games setup, I thought that was kind of weird. Is it Braun Breakers on that team? We're in a situation right now where this War Games team, and we'll talk about this next week when we get into the predictions. The War Games team is not heels versus baby faces, because I, I'm, as far as I'm assuming, Braun Breaker is not a heel, so that throws that off. It's not old versus young because Pete Dunne's the same age as the other guys and younger than some other guys. It's not former NXT guys against the new breed because LA Knight's a pretty new guy. So what is it then? There you go. That's your answer is once again, WWE's just like, who fucking cares? Watch the pay-per-view. That's basically the way that they're operating these days. Johnny Gargano has signed an extension to be able to work through war games no indication of whether or not he is going to stay and re-sign with WWE after that point, or if that is a sort of death knell of, I will sign to do that, and then I'm gone the way that Adam Cole was. I kind of feel like he's leaving. I don't want that to be the case, but I don't want him to be in a bad position in WWE either. I just want him to be a WWE guy and in a very good spot in there. Not everybody can go to AEW, and if everybody goes to AEW, not everybody's going to be that big deal. 
And I think that people lose track of that every once in a while because everybody wants like, yeah, I want some people to go to AEW at this point because I know that they'll do better. Like Adam Cole, that was the right move for sure. Kevin Owens, as much as I hate to admit it, Kevin Owens will be better off in AEW than in WWE because his run in WWE, they just, they gave up at some point. Everything went downhill with that whole Goldberg and Brock Lesnar thing. That just killed everything. And I don't know why they did it. We've talked about it a million times, but that completely killed his momentum and he never recovered from it. So I want him to go there. You know, I'm digging the idea that like, for instance, Tony Nese is in AEW now. I think he's going to end up being relatively better off. I still don't think he's going to end up winning some world championship or something, but he might win the TNT championship. I don't think he will. I think he's just another opponent, but he had a good uh, line with Sammy Guevara this week where he was saying the only reason that you're a TNT champion is because guys like me weren't available yet. I like that. Speaking of good lines, the CM Punk and the Miz thing, if we're just talking about AEW at this point, the uh, you're just a less famous Miz and uh, the only way that you are going to be on top of this company is because uh, is if you wait long enough for Tony Khan to have a daughter that you can marry. Nice dig at Triple H there. Uh, I enjoyed that promo. That was great. Some good in-ring action, of course. Uh, all across the board. I mean, there's a shit ton of talented people. That's the thing. There's no shortage of talented wrestlers that are out there these days. Now, it doesn't matter if uh, one of those is Cody Rhodes. People are going to boo him anyway. <laughs> it seems like he's stuck in that John Cena sort of situation right now where it's sort of like, um, yeah, the crowd doesn't want to have Cody Rhodes do the babyface act, and they're going to throw the belt back and everything too. Um, but that's that's an interesting kind of story. Um, NXT UK, nothing really going on for that one. No Dar retained the NXT UK Heritage Cup over there. Yeah, I'm not coming across all that much. So, you know, I think I might kind of wrap this up. Isn't that a shame? Nothing going on. You know what that probably means? More than likely, after I edit this podcast and I pop this, uh, pop this up, I don't know why I said pop this up, put this up, that I'm going to end up tomorrow reading the news and it's going to end up being like six stories that would have been a pretty good hot tag. <laughs> Hopefully not super bad stuff if that is the case. Hopefully it's stuff that can carry on to the next week's discussion and you know everything that we talk about post the War Games predictions because that's going to be the main event for next week. And then you know another round of the hot tags and then NXT War Games post show after that. And we're going to get starting to get into the end of the year. I mean, it's, it's December at that point. So we don't have a whole lot of weeks left with these uh, end of the year awards and everything. And then we, the next thing you know, we're going to be on WWE day one. So possibly about Rushmore coming up, possibly some other ideas. Depends on what you guys want. Depends on what we're able to do. Depends on what's going on at the moment. Drop your suggestions in the comments below. Have fun doing whatever you're doing this weekend. Uh, if you survived the Black Friday crowd, at least you're going to be off better with the Cyber Monday things. And you got to just open up your phone or your, you know, your laptop or desktop or something. It's a lot easier. And you know, don't do the Black Friday uh, nonsense. Uh, you know, stay safe with whatever it might be. Make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. Make sure that you hit the like button. Follow, like, share, favorite, subscribe, blah, 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 to have all that other kind of same stuff over on fanboysanonymous.com as well. And, of course, follow me at Tony Mango all over the place. Add me on Nintendo Switch. I posted that before. Go ahead and check that out. It was on the channel update thing, I think. Uh, if you don't know, let me know, and I'll drop the, my code or something in there. Add me on that. If, you, uh, you know, if you're on Pokemon Go, add me on there. Add me on Pokemon Home. I'm going to try to play a little bit more games and you know have a little bit more fun having a little bit of a break has made me just go yeah i need to stop caring so much about some stuff i need to just relax a little bit more so i'm trying to do that that's why i'm a little bit flippant about this episode i'm just sort of like yeah you know not that much talking about so i'm just gonna uh, yeah blah 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 that kind of thing <laughs> so hopefully it's not uh too annoying of an episode at least hopefully you enjoyed this little thing uh i might record a little dark cast about that um that whole Survivor Series thing that we had done previously. I might not. I don't know. I thought about doing that for the hot tags even. And then I thought, you know, I'd have to start doing the the recording um, for the screen and everything like that. It completely changes the setup from what I'm recording now. And frankly, 
I kind of want to go to bed a little bit. So thank you for listening to this. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for everything that's going on. And, you know, you, if you pick up a T-shirt or something on TeePublic or Redbubble with these sales, thank you for that, too. You know, um, thank you for subscribing on Patreon if you're one of those. Thank you for being on the YouTube members only platform. Thank you for your suggestions, your comments, your retweets, everything. I'm very, very thankful for everybody that follows everything and all of your support over the years. So uh, Thanksgiving was a couple days ago, but I wanted to say that anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will see you next time, everybody. But for now, this has been another Smart Out Moment, and I'm being counted out.